Listen, you're not gonna find anything on me, okay? Trust me. Empty your pockets into the tray, sir, or we'll have to. Your pockets, sir? Lady, the problem isn't in my pants. No! We've got some good news. Finally, we're, there's an issue of X-Men that we can talk about. Something we've been very excited about here on the channel. X-Men Legends number one. Bobby and Nissi ends up coming in to re basically finish up a story that he started never did. Brett Booth on art. Obviously, it's got that 90s flair, that 90s feel to it. I enjoyed the, the issue quite a bit. I'm giving it like a 4.5 out of 5. I uh, highly recommend. Really enjoy this comic, especially for the art. The, the story is intriguing as well. Maybe Bobby need, needed like three or four issues to tell the story, but he's getting two. And here to talk with me about that is my good friend, the X-Men historian, the Marvel aficionado. Doc, how you doing? I am great, man. I got the I got a great issue of X-Men Legends to talk about. I am spectacular. All right, so it met all of your expectations. Honestly, yeah. I mean, the only thing that uh, I could want is about 150 more issues of it. Well, you're getting <laughs> one. I know. <laughs> I'm getting I'm get, I'm getting two. I want like 10 years, but I'll, I'll settle for what I can get. Absolutely. Obviously, after this will be the um the, the Simonsons finishing up with their X Factor story. Now, before we get into the details of X Men Legends number one, I do want to say if you haven't subscribed to the channel and you like comic book reviews, you like comic book news, this is likely the place for you and you might want to subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoy this review. Thumbs down if you don't. Either way, we want to hear your thoughts. Did you enjoy Brett Boothsart? What did you think about the story? Now, let's get into the details, Doc. So first thing we got to talk about is the art from Brett Booth. We get a nice big action scene to open her up. It, it feels like 1990s X-Men. It doesn't even necessarily feel like 1990s X-Men. It feels like every comic, you know, like the introduction to a new story on any superhero comic from basically about 1940 up until 2012. You know, it starts with this big bombastic splash page some high octane art and 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 action right out the gate now granted stylistically yes it's it's 80s 90s definitely fits that style and but the story wise it's you know and and the the page layout it's traditional comic book superhero fare and i love it yeah, if you couldn't get, you know, Jim Lee or Rob Liefeld or maybe Mark Silvestri to come back for these X-Men Le Legends issues and, and illustrate some of these, Brett Booth is essentially the, the best artist that you're going to get for it. He takes it to it like a like a duck to water. Very exciting, very lively. If you've thought comic books have been mundane lately, come and check out X-Men Legends because it is not mundane. It is high octane, even when they're little bit more character moments and delivering information it's still exciting to look at yeah i mean there's there's energy on every page it doesn't matter if they're just standing around talking the plot forward or if they're actually out there you know jumping over and smashing through police cars and shattering windows and terrifying people in a hospital there's action on every every page you can just feel the energy in it and you know what Brett is, in my opinion, the the best action superhero artist that is still doing regular interior work today. Well, you might be right on that one. A lot of people have been moved over to covers. I do want to say this about the comic issue. This opening splash page, it says Providence Hospital in Anchorage, Alaska. I used to live about three blocks away from that building. So there you go. Oh, that's it was awesome. nice to see some some of my old stopping ground in this comic book. Now, this is obviously, it's all about the Summers Brothers, and we get the opening scene, and it turns out we've got Eric the Red and his and his uh, his minions have kidnapped the Summers Brothers' grandparents. So they talk to the local sheriff. They've got like some, like a ransom note in Shi'ar text, and they find out, they have to go find out who the Forsaken One is, and we get some character information just about who Adam X is, He's obviously the forsaken one. It's a good opener. They're, they're definitely trying to get you caught back up on this, and I, I do appreciate that for people maybe that haven't read this in a long time or maybe have never read it, but Adam X is very quintessential 90s character. Yeah, he, he is. And 
Adam X, um, this storyline takes place after X-Men number 39. That would have been late 94. The, the next issue, issue 40, is the issue that starts the Age of Apocalypse with you know Legion going back and accidentally killing Xavier in uh, Israel back you know, post-World War II. This is this is kind of stuck between them. So there's a good reason why this story never really got published because the rest of the line literally got rebooted the next month. So we never got a chance back then to to learn anything, anything serious, at least in the pages of X-Men, about Adam X's history. This is a good primer and it kind of does a good flashback thing with with telling us who he is, where he came from, and kind of giving us an origin that we never really had before for him. The very exciting stuff. And then it gets visited by the other quintessential 90s character that's in this comic book, Cable. I, I think they just wanted to have, maybe have Cable in the book. You know, Obviously, they could have provided this information by any character. He comes and visits him. He's like, hey, you're, the Summers brothers need to to meet with you their grandparents have been kidnapped you know whoever's got them wants to talk to you and he, he gets them a little bit of information and gets them uh kind of moving along on his journey it but no it does make sense that cable's there because it's his great grandparents remember he's scott's kid so his dad and uncle want to meet with he doesn't know it yet i mean that it's his other uncle but so it does make sense that they'd send cable of, of all the people because he's eminently capable uh, of dealing with Adam X. If, if it turns into a scuffle, it is a situation that does connect him. He is connected to it because it is his great grandparents that have been kidnapped. You know, his dad sending dad and uncle sending him on the mission because you know, he, he, they need it done. No, I got that, but they could have had Charles speak to him telepathically. They could have had Gene Gray do it. They could have had someone fly over, but they decided to use Cable because he is related to this story. But yeah. I, I think they just kind of wanted to get Cable and Adam X together. Honestly, I don't mind, and I, I love – this is my favorite Cable costume. I don't know why. Compared to a lot of his other ones, it's kind of plain, but there's – it still has a lot of detail. I, I I love like that kind of. Maybe it's because the the chest hardest thing reminds me of like Avengers Hercules. Plus, and I think it, Cable just is kind of like the most complicated character design in maybe the history of comics. So taking a step back and making it a little bit more simplistic probably isn't the worst thing. Yeah, that plus the fact that I think for the first time he was actually adopting. Um, an X-Men themed costume because all of his stuff before this point was kind of his future soldier costume. And now he's kind of looking at being an X-Man like his father before him. <laughs> so after this, it just kind of goes bonkers. It goes balls to the wall. We end up with a, a ton of action. The star jammers show up, you know, they're looking for him. Uh, Adam X quickly deduces that they're working for uh, Imperium, which means Empress Elisandra Il or Il Landra knows who they are or knows who he is. Then his brothers show up and they're all fighting each other. And then uh, there's some good reveals. We'll just talk about the action to begin with before we get the big reveal about the brothers. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> the, the action is awesome. I mean, watching Raza and Hepzibah just like try to. They they are wildly out. They don't even realize how outgunned they are by Adam X. You know, they catch him kind of by surprise. He doesn't back down. I mean, they think they have him on the run, but all he was doing was changing the field of battle on them. I, I, I haven't seen the Star Jammers look this good since X Men 275, like Uncanny 275. With Jim Lee, maybe, maybe during the um, uh, rise and fall of the Shi'ar Empire story arc that that was Claire, uh, I think, I think that was Brubaker's first 
uh, arc on Uncanny. But yeah, I mean the the the, the Star Jammers look great. They look threatening, but they also you know look awesome. Cyclops and Havoc show up, and it kind of turns into a a little bit of a three way fight between Cyclops and Havoc going after the Star Jammers. The Star Jammers going after Adam X, and Adam X kind of going after everybody. <laughs> yeah, so that's like the kind of the big reveal. They're kind of looking at each other, and, and Adam X finally uses his power. He cuts everybody over. He's going to, you know, start, you know, ignite their blood or whatever. It does not work on the Summers brothers. And they kind of look at each other kind of, uh, what is that, Pulp Fiction style? Yeah. And they realize nothing happened. They decided to shoot him themselves, and then nothing happens to him. And he's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> they, yeah, everybody's like, confused. why aren't our powers working on this guy, and why isn't his powers working on us? Yeah, everybody's just like, wait. Wait, what just happened? <laughs> and I love that. There was th like that's like the the great humor, you know, without it being overdone. I, I think the problem is whenever a lot of modern writers try to write jokes, they beat you over the head with the joke, like, hey, do you get it? Do you get it? Whereas this one, it, it's it's a little more subtle. And then Adam X is like, wait, that's supposed to hurt, wasn't it? <laughs> Yeah. And and it was kind of it was kind of it was just subtle enough humor that I actually did get a good chuckle out of it. No, that was good. I, I was smiling. I was like, that's pretty good. <laughs> so they know there's something going on, and next thing you know, the Star Jammer ship uncloaks itself, Corsair comes out, and we get the big reveal, something I think we've all known for quite some time. Oh yeah. Scott Alex, meet your brother, but then he does something unthinkable. He shoots. I assume he's shooting Adam X. I would assume so, yes. He's definitely, well, he's aiming and firing, and then we get the great kind of final page cliffhanger to, to get us interested in, in coming back for the next issue because you don't know who he hit. You're assuming he's trying to shoot Adam X, but for all you know, he's actually shooting his other kids because he is on a mission and... They're trying to stop him from it because it seemed like uh, Raza and Hepzibah were actually trying to uh, capture Adam X rather than kill him. So he could be, you know, Corsair could be trying to knock out Alex and uh, Scott so that he can take Adam. We definitely have to see what happens here, but we, there's tons of action, lots of drama going on. Wish this was maybe a four issue you know, story arc to finish this up, but it is going to be two issues. Obviously, next one, X Men Legends number two, will be the the follow up to this issue. Overall, like I mentioned, I give this like a four and a half star comic. Lots of fun. It's been an excellent comic book week, and X Men Legends number one has definitely more, been one of the highlights. Yeah, I can't really argue with four and a half star. Four and a half star. I mean, I don't know if it was an absolutely perfect comic to get five. But, yeah, there's just some, some pacing issues. Yeah. But I think yeah. it's because he was constricted by the 44 pages or whatever he had to work with. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if this would have... Honestly, I think even if it would have been three issues, it would have given it a little bit more room to breathe. Plus, I would have gotten an extra 22 issues of Brett's artwork. But no, it was, it was great. I, I, and honestly, I would have loved to see what follows this. I want to see a follow-up on this story already. Like, even after the first issue, you know, okay, fine, we're cool. We're we're completing, you know, what happened at the end of, you know, between issues, X-Men issues 39 and 40. I want to, I want to see what happens after, after this already. I mean, it's already got me interested enough and engaged enough that I want to see a continuation. And the good news is, Next week, we've got a couple more X-Men issues we're going to review. There's a new issue of, of X-Men, which I believe the children of the, of the vault are returning. X-23, Darwin, and was it uh, Sink? Yes. I think those three characters are ret returning, and we also have a new issue of Wolverine. So we're, we will review those. We're not going to review comics every week about for X-Men, but when we get the special stuff or the, or the things people are most interested in, we, we will do it. And uh, I don't know, that, that'll that basically do it. Is there anything else you wanted to say, Doc, about X-Men Legends number one? Buy X-Men Legends number two. 
<laughs> I mean, seriously, this is, it was a great fun story and I, I couldn't get enough. And for the first time, I'm actually invested in, in Adam X. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I would appreciate it very much. It helps us attract more views for the channel. Subscribe for future commentary, comic book news and reviews. And don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. If you want to talk comics, movies, and much, much more, you can follow me on Twitter at Wes underscore from underscore TC. With that, Salamat Po, and I'm out.